earn tentacles to prove your devotion to the great Inky One. This is our review of Cosmoctopus. Cosmoctopus is an area movement hand management game about collecting cosmic octopus tentacles. And I really like the theming, how they took space and an octopus and put it together. I was really looking forward to this game because of the designer, Henry Audubon, but I ended up feeling a little underwhelmed. We'll tell you why after this quick how to play. The game is played over an undetermined number of turns with each player moving to the Cosmoctopus and playing a card on their turn. Players will move the Cosmoctopus to an adjacent inky realm tile and then gain the bonus on the tile. Players may then play a card from their hand, which could be a scripture, relic, hallucination, or constellation card. Cards will provide permanent discounts, ongoing effects, one-time effects, or earn players' tentacles. As soon as any player gains their eighth tentacle, the game immediately ends and that player wins. Before you go praising the space octopus in the sky, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Like the great inky one, we live off your adoration and really appreciate all the likes we can get. I was really looking forward to this game because it's a new game from Henry Audubon. He's the creator of the game Parks, which is my favorite game. So I was looking forward to see what he had next in the pipeline as far as what the next game was going to be. And I felt like there's a lot of elements of Parks in this. You're moving a character around, collecting tokens, using the tokens to pay for cards. There's more engine building with this one because you can then get discounts with the cards that you're going. So you need less tokens. So I like that element. There are differences, but I can see the elements of of the style of game that he seems to create, at least based on parks. And I can see it in here. And I do like the creativity of a space octopus. So I like all those elements of it. I just was expecting a little bit more when it actually came to the gameplay. So I really enjoyed this game. Just, we saw it at Gen Con, I walked by and I'm like, oh, here's a box with a giant octopus on it. And Kenny's like, oh, we backed it. We should be getting it soon. I'm like, okay, cool. Now, the thing I like the most is that it seems like it's combining so many things that I didn't realize could go together, but are going together. So space, octopus, there's like a culty kind of magical thing here, but then there's also like a sciency, technology, astrological thing too. So it's like, oh, okay, there's a there's a technology here, but then uh, there's a portal to, looks like something out of a horror movie kind of. So it's like, oh, okay, you know, a lot of things going on. And then your points are these little tentacles. So I think production value wise, I really like how everything just kind of came together. So mechanics wise, when you set up the game, you're gonna have the nine different realm tiles in the game. You're gonna have the basic ones and then you'll rotate out a special tile that will be different. So that can add some variety to the game. And then on the player's turn, they're gonna move the octopus around and whatever you land on, you're gonna get that. So for example, if I were to land on this tile, I would get three of these yellow pieces. So that's what that would mean. And then of course, there's one with three of the red pieces and you can get three of the black pieces, etc. But basically you move and then you can get that item or perform that action. You can also pay items to then move extra spaces so that you can move further around, but you can't like, land on the same space or double back to the space that you're going on. So there's a lot of restrictions to your movement and that can add some interesting strategy to how you're playing, but it can also add some interesting strategy. If you see a player going for certain things, you can always try to end your turn on the space that they might need, then they may not be able to circle back around to it. So there's a lot of different ways that you can manipulate the board as you're playing, depending on where you're going, what you need and what you think your opponents need. The one thing I'm always a fan of is just like the permanent discounts or somewhat the engine building of games. You know, some people can start going for real quick how to get these tentacles, but I'm thinking more about like, okay, how do I like generate things? So that, you know, at the end I'm like, ha, I'm rich. Or, or how do I just make things super cheap where it's like, oh, okay, don't need to pay anything. Here we go, I'm gonna play this card. So the game I think kind of starts out kind of slow because everyone's figuring out like, okay, move, move, collect, move, move, collect. And then eventually when the first person gets the, the first tentacle, you're like, okay, and now the real game begins. The game can have a varying degree of length depending on the order of the deck and which cards come up. So the cards have different actions that they'll give you. The easiest one to explain are the constellations where you'll get the constellation card and then you need to fill it up with these items. And then once you do that, then you'll get a tentacle. Some of them will also have bonus abilities, but for the most part, you're always gonna get a tentacle on that way. That's gonna be your main way of getting your eight tentacles that you're gonna need 
in your little area. Then you're gonna have instant actions that you'll play and then you can instantly do them. These are the hallucination cards. So these will just have actions that you can do. Then you'll have two types of cards that can either generate effects or they can generate discounts. So the black ones are gonna generate the discount. So for the rest of the game, you'll pay two less of the red symbol or this one, every time you get a blue star, you can then get another blue star. So it's an ongoing effect. When you do this action, you can get that action. There is a lot to think about and a lot to order of how you're gonna strategize to get the best engine or the best chain of events going so that no matter what you're doing, always on your turn, there's a lot going on and you're really building that momentum. Doing all that, can go really quickly if the deck is stacked in a way or if it's a two player game and it's going real quick or it can take a long time if the deck is stacked bad or it's a three or four player game and everyone's taking all the cards you need or everyone's taking the cards from each other so it ends up kind of being a stalemate and the first 30 minutes of the game is just people, oh, I need this card, I need this card, I need this card and then it's like, oh, one tentacle, two tentacle, three tentacle and then like in the last five minutes, someone gets like six tentacles all right in a row so it's like slow, slow, slow and game's over. When did that happen? It's not really weighted well going from two player to three player to four player with the, the randomness of the deck and the drawing of the cards and all that. I feel like it's a little uneven with the play time. One thing I will say, it's minor. It's a personal thing. I'm probably just being silly, but I remember I'm sitting here and I'm like, all right, I got three tentacles. How many more? And then I'm trying to count the spaces. I'm like, one, two, three, four, five. I know it's an octopus. I know oct eight. I knew I needed to collect eight, but still there were points in the game where I'm like, all right, hold on. I need one, two. I had to count the spaces. I don't know why, but like the, the scoring of this, I was like, huh. But I know at the end it's supposed to be like, oh, okay, now he's in your realm or your galaxy and there's all his little tentacles. So I get it. I just wanted to admit, uh, that lead us no, silly, silly thing. <laughs> a silly thing that I thought when I was playing. That's all. I would say the one thing I liked is it's like a fun culty kind of thing that they made it. It's not like like culty, dark culty. Like like this isn't an evil octopus that's kind of gonna rip your head off and destroy the galaxy. Unless, you know, that's where the Maybe comic book's is. going. I don't know. But from the little pieces and stuff, it didn't look that way. I really love the creativity of everything going on, the theming. I like how they tried to combine some of the elements of games either that Henry has done before or the other games that we've played, other mechanics. I like the thought of trying to integrate them. I just wish it could have been sped up a little bit. So that's something I don't like is I don't like how long it can take sometimes. And I don't like the unevenness of the decks of cards and the disbursement of the cards, especially with the different levels of player counts, two, three, four player counts can sometimes vary drastically in how long the game takes. So I like the creativity, I like the mechanics, but I also don't like how they ended up actually working together. What about you? What did you not like? Uh, I would say, and not so much a thing with just this game, it's like when you have these types of games and you pick a certain strategy or whatnot, and then towards late game or end game, you're like, oh, I need this resource, but you know the way the game played out, I've been focusing on these and now, I've completely shut myself off to that. So completely like shutting off when you're not getting a certain type of thing or, or resources. It, it, I, I, I felt that at the end of the game when I'm like, ah, oh, okay, I'm just give up, pivot, pivot and just focus on these now, I guess. Overall, I really enjoyed the theming. I like the amalgamation of like all the different types of concepts or, or games that came together to kind of make this. So I'm gonna give it a seven. I think I'll probably play it a couple more times. So I think this will be a keeper, something for my collection. Overall, I really enjoyed this game. I like the theming, very creative. I like some of the mechanics and how they work well together, but I really don't like how some of them don't work and how slow the game can be and how draggy it can be. It can be a little bit boring at times. I'm still gonna give it a seven, but this game wouldn't be a keeper in my collection. I've played it enough, I don't really wanna play it again. And that was our review of Cosmoctopus. What'd you think? Are you ready to Octa buy this game? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're enjoying our content, please like this video, subscribe to our channel. Until next time, I'm Lee. And I'm Kenny, and go party like a board gamer.